G'day, Derek from 4x4 Adventure WA. Uh, today I'm going to make a fire pit. It's pretty late at night actually, um, in my shed, working on my fire pit. So I'll show you my design. So basically, um, this is a bit of a design, a uh, very simple fire pit. Um, where the plan is to cut out this material. This is a 3 mil steel sheet, very heavy, around $100. Uh, it's 900 by 1800. Um, so the plan is to cut these 1800 uh, by half. So it becomes a square 900 times uh, by 900. Uh, and then from that 900 by 900, we cut out the sections in each corner. Hopefully we can fold, um, uh, we can fold each side um, according to this picture. Alright, so I'm going to take this grinder uh, and I'll be using this as a cutting grinder in this case. And um, not sure if you have actually followed my channel before, but uh, previously I've made a bit of a device. It's a bit of an angle grinder attachment that allows me to cut things in a pretty straight line. So that basically goes onto here. I'll put, um, I'll put the video link in this corner up there. So if you're interested in that, you can obviously check that out. Uh, it's a pretty good idea anyway. It's a bit of an angle grinder hack. Um, Alright, so the next part is to grab a... Where's my cutting disc? I think my cutting disc is here. I'm still in a bit of a mess at the moment. So, here. I have to find out my cutting disc. Here, the 125mm uh, uh, thickness, 1mm steel and stainless steel cutting disc. And uh, when I'm basically doing this, you, um, well, if, let's start here. So I'll put this back on here, and you have to sort of calculate the, the offset um, whichever way you, you want to cut. Um, and you see this wedding table. That, this is the, the table that I've made previously, uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, you see how I've spaced the gaps this way. And this is basically allow me to cut. Um, so I can do a long cut this way without cutting anything underneath. So what I'll be doing is I'll put this back on, I'll put this back on, and I'll find the offset and I'll clamp it down and cut that straight through. guys <clears throat> basically the cut was done you see it's not perfectly straight unfortunately uh, I've tried to make it make it uh, perfectly straight but uh, I've overheat something uh, right in the middle and I had to change the blade quite a few times I've actually gone through um, a couple of blades abrasive wheel I should say and it is the third one and it's about to go um, I've underestimated the three mil steel and this is really difficult to cut. Not sure if there, is, there are some better wheels out there, but this one there is one mil thickness. It's supposed to be a really fast cutting wheel, and it's still had a bit of trouble cutting through this. Uh, but I've managed to cut it anyway, so uh, it wasn't too bad. And uh, it's, it's not a project that needs to be perfect, but you kind of get the idea anyway. Um, yeah, so what I did, I've gone, I've, I had to keep spraying a lot of these oils. Uh, well, basically, a bit of a DIY version of, of, uh, of the stuff we use. I use canola oil, and I just keep spraying heaps of, and heaps in there to avoid um, too much heat produced. So that's basically it. Uh, so what's next is to cut out the, the corners, 
um, and draw basically a square in the middle and cut the corners. So hopefully, I will be able to fold um, the bowl up uh, following the lines that I've got later, not at the moment. folks um, basically as per whatever I've got on the design here this is the section that I'm going to remove in four different corners uh, and that is basically the base of the fire pit and hopefully uh, I still have no idea how to bend these corners but uh, I mean these edges hopefully I'll be able to find a way to bend um, these four edges and uh, yeah we'll, we'll find it out we'll sort it out we don't know how to but we'll just have to keep trying all right here we go so finally I've cut all these corners and uh, sorry about the noise uh, there's a bit of a fan going on there um, so basically what I'm about to do is you see the lines vividly a little bit um, so this, there is a square there. I'm trying to make a fold on the square. I have no idea how to do it because this still is really rigid. Uh, might heat up a little bit, um, hopefully make it a little bit more malleable. And uh, I might use this advantage of this bench, find an edge on the bench and see if I can clamp it down and force it down. Let's see what happens. Uh, no promise. I can't promise anything at the moment. Uh, I might, it might be a failure. Yeah, folks, um, that was the uh, rate limiting step. Um, do you know how to bend this thing? But I uh, found out the best way, uh, if you haven't got a hydraulic bender, um, the best way to bend this thick, this is quite thick, three mils, is to weaken the edge by using a grinder. So you cut off probably about half a mil or even a little bit more. Uh, the more the better, but obviously you don't cut all the way. Uh, so after you weaken that join, and then you apply some leverage, like how I uh, how I did in the video, uh, you put something a little bit longer, and make sure you have clamped something strong on either side, and then uh, you find something to stabilize the top, and then you pull it up. That's probably the easiest way to bend um, a, a thick piece of metal. But obviously, that way, if you really want to strength, if you really want to have a strong um, structure. Uh, you might have to put some weld in to strengthen the join. Uh, otherwise, you might have to use a hydraulic bender. So here, basically this is all um, ready, power up. And I'm going to do, uh, do a set of tap welds uh, and then do a bit of welding to make sure it stays in place. Um, so I turn on the welder. Oh, the weld is upside down. I mean, um, it's the other way anyway. So. Uh, according to this uh, steel, we are using gasless wires, and I think I'm 0 0.8. I don't I don't remember, but anyway, they're not a big difference. Three mil is 19 slash eight or nine. So let's do the setup. 
Uh, that's me, isn't it? That's me. So do a 19. Let's start with 19 and test it out. And um, I think it was 8 or 9. Let's try 8. Alright, how's that? Let's give it a go. Folks, just check this out. Um, obviously, this is not fantastic, but uh, the whole thing stuck together, so it's all good. Uh, the uh, the gaps between these two plates uh, sometimes are pretty pretty large, and uh, I tend to burn a few holes in between. But the end product is not too bad. Let me check this out. It's not too bad, is it? But sometimes they're quite lumpy, and uh, these are. Quite horrible. You see how it becomes molten and it sort of cools down this way. It probably was a result of the temperature too high. So I might have to turn uh, when, whenever I do something like this again in the future. I have to turn down the voltage a bit so uh, it's not as hot, so it stays there okay. But turns out not too bad. Not too bad. Here, the um, the main body of the fire pit is actually completed. Uh, the good thing about fire pit is that it's, um, it's black steel, so you don't really have to worry about wh whether it gets rusted or not. So no rust prevention is needed. Um, spent some time drilling all these holes. There were a pain in the back side. Um, it would be nice if you you know have a have a drill press and it makes the whole life a lot easier, save a lot, lot, a lot of time as well. Uh, so the next part is to build the legs. And uh, I've got these legs, raw material here. These are the 20 um, uh, units, I don't know, 20 nominal, uh, nominal thing, anyway. So th these are the uh, galvanized, galvanized um, pipes. I'm going to weld a bit of a rack that supports this fire pit.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. You can also find us on social media. Just type in 4x4 Adventure WA. I'll see you in the next episode.